it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today I am here with a poncho and yes I managed to make this poncho in a day. Now I have to admit I did use super chunky yarn it worked up so quickly and you know what it is so warm I have literally not taken it off since I made this. So I set out to make this poncho in a day. I did the start before breakfast. Then I had breakfast and then after breakfast, I just sat down and worked on it for two hours and I managed to get quite a few rows done. Then after lunch, I did another session of two hours. And then after dinner, I just settled down with something nice on my television and I just worked until it was finished. And I think I did another three hours. Maybe I did go into the fourth hour, but I did it in a day. So not really 24 hours, more like seven, eight maybe hours. Um, but yes, I am so happy with this poncho. It worked up, like I said, super quickly because of course it was a super chunky yarn. Now for this project, I used Wendy Husky. It's a super chunky. And on the ball, there is 80 meters. It's premium acrylic and it is this color is the adventure color. There are lots of colors in there. There's about six colors and they're all really nice. So do go and have a look on our website because we have them as well. And here it is prescribed for a 10 millimeter crochet hook, but I'm going to be using my 12 because I want my fabric a little bit looser and lacier. So this is my higher higher hook and it has the 12 sort of printed on the side there. I don't know whether you can see it. And the range of higher higher hooks is normally metal, but the 12 and the 15 are made of acrylic because otherwise they would just be too heavy for you to handle. So it's a really nice hook to work with. And this is the one, of course, that I'm going to be using for this project here. Then for darning in our ends, I'm going to be using one of my higher, higher darning needles. Really big eye here, so that will take the yarn, so that's perfect. And then, of course, my scissors as well. Okay, so let's get started on the tutorial for the poncho. Now, I'm not going to use the husky because it's um, different colored yarn and it makes it really hard maybe on camera to see the stitches. So I'm going to do it in DK. Now, I'm going to be using my normal hook that I use with DK, but this will also show you how different it is when you make something in thin yarn or thick yarn. So this pattern is designed for a super chunky yarn. So let's get started. First of all, make your slip knot whichever way you usually make it. Insert your hook and we are going to chain 52. Now I'm going to start with chaining 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. We have to make sure that our chain actually doesn't get twisted when we make a little circle. So in order to prevent that, I have a little trick. So pull up your loop so it doesn't get undone. Then you go to the first chain you did. You go in there with your hook and you go back to your loop. So now this way we know that our chain as we continue is not going to get twisted. So you pull the loop closed again and now we have to do another 42 chains. One, 
and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two. So in total, I now have fifty-two chains. If you do this, of course, in your super chunky, your chain will be twenty-six inches or sixty-five centimeters. And now we are going to turn this into a circle. So you take this loop and you pull it through the loop that's already on your hook, like so. And look, we now have, without the end hanging in the way, we now have closed our circle. And our chain is not twisted. So now we are going to get started on round two. So that means we are going to chain two. This will count as the last stitch of our round. So let's just disregard it for now. And then we are going to look at the very first chain that we have here, which is this one here. And in that chain, we are going to create the back tip. So that means we're going to make a corner. So we yarn over, we insert into that very first chain. And I always try and pick up one strand on this side, two strands on the back. You pull up the loop and you do a double crochet. Now we do the same thing. So we go into the same stitch and we do another double crochet. So you've got two double crochets coming out of that first stitch. And of course, you've got your chain coming out of the last stitch. So there we go. OK, now we are going to do two chains, one, two. And then you are going to place another two double crochets into that same stitch. So this is the back tip made. Now we're going to make the side and a side is made up of 25 double crochets. So we're going to use the first 25 stitches and we're going to place one double crochet in each one of them. So into the next stitch, into the next chain, you are going to place yeah, a double crochet. And another one. And that's three. Now number four. I will see you when I have done 25 double crochets. So now I have done my 25 double crochets and now in the next stitch we are going to create the front tip. So that means we are going to do two double crochets, two chains and two double crochets in that same stitch. There we go. And now here we are going to do 24 double crochets because this chain here counts as our 25th. So let's start doing our double crochets. Make sure you don't miss this one here because of course you've used that one stitch here for quite a few stitches. So the next one after that is sort of minimized a little bit but I found it there we go so 24 double crochets <laughs> So 
So here I've done my 24 double crochets. Now for my 25th, so I'm going to skip the chain that we did at the beginning of the round. And then you go under the next V there and you do a slip stitch. Voila. So this here counts as my 25th stitch. So now for round three, you're going to do a chain two, then you're going to place double crochets on top of the double crochets of the row below. And when you get to the chain space of the tip, in there you are going to place two double crochets, two chains and two double crochets. So you create a tip where, of course, there is already one. So there we go. And then you start doing the double crochets on the side and you're going to place a double crochet in each stitch. So make sure you start with the first one and you create one in every stitch. <laughs> You work your way all the way to the other tip, create the corner there, and then you work your way along the side to where we started. I will see you here. These colorways are particularly forgiving when you have to start a new ball. You just tie it on, keep crocheting, and you won't even be able to tell where you started a new ball. So in the ends later on. So I've made it to the end of my round here. I've just used this stitch. This stitch, of course, is used by that chain two that's coming out of it. So I'm going to go under the next V there and closing my round. So that is where we are at at the moment. And of course, as you can see, yes, it will make a little poncho, but of course it's not big enough for us to use. But this pattern, as I said before, is meant for a super chunky yarn. Okay, so your stitches will be much, much bigger. <laughs> Now for round four, we are going to do a little something a little bit different, which will create a little bit of structure in our poncho. So to get started, we are going to chain two. Then we are going to use the back loop only. So this is the front loop. This is the back loop. You pick that one up and you do your double crochet. And this will create a little bit of structure in our poncho, a little bit of relief. And when, of course, you do this in your super chunky yarn, it will stand out a lot more than it does here. So let me just show you on here. Look, you've got these threads here. That is using the back loop only. And I thought it's a simple but such an effective effect because you can see those lines running through your work and it just creates a little bit more of a depth to your poncho. So now we are at the tip and that is where we are going to do our two double crochets two chains and two double crochets around the chain space as we are used to. Okay, and then of course we continue, but we are picking up the back loops. And doing this, like I said, gives it a little bit of an interesting effect. So this is what my poncho looks like right now. So let's just finish this fourth round. So skip two stitches here into that third V and you close the round. And then you keep on repeating round three, round four, round three, round four. So round three, just picking up 
both strands round four picking up the back strand and it is really simple to do. Look at the difference. So this is what we have just made. It's the same amount of stitches, the same pattern as this here in the super chunky and look at the size difference. So we've got one, two, three rounds and here one, two, three rounds. So up to here, that is the size of the poncho in the super chunky. And of course, that is why I was able to make this in a day. Now, I am a size medium. So I used seven balls and I did 20 rounds. If you are smaller than me or shorter, then you will need less yarn and less rounds. If you are bigger or taller, you will need more yarn. So you would have to go to eight, nine, 10 or even 11 balls. I do find that the neck opening doesn't need adjusting depending on your size. But I would recommend you start with the amount I suggest and then after two rounds, try it on to make sure that it fits over your head. If it doesn't, you will have to start again and you will have to add stitches to your starting chain. The multiple is two, so you always have to add in twos. So I hope you will enjoy making this poncho if you are ever in a squeeze for making a poncho in the shortest amount of time possible. Try making it in a nice thick yarn and you will see it works up really, really quickly. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.